Uh, good morning from a snowy Toronto, Canada. My name is Armin Mulkey, and I would like to welcome you to our final user webinar for 2021. In this webinar series, we highlight the works of academics from around the world who rely on quantum solutions and technologies as part of their research. Uh, today, we're very fortunate to have Professor Ruben Garrido from the Center for Research and Advanced Studies of the National Polytechnic Institute, or SINVESTA of IPN in Mexico, to present a novel method for tuning PID controllers using a disturber, disturbance of, uh, observer approach. Professor Garrido received his bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from ESIME IPN in Mexico in 1983, his master's degree again in electrical engineering from the Sinvestov in 1987, and his PhD degree um, from University of Technology de Compiègne in France in 1993. He's currently a professor at the Department of Automatic Control at Sinvesta. His research interests um, include server control, robot manipulator control, adaptive control and identification, educational aspects and automatic control, solar tracking systems for high concentration photovoltaics, neural network control, and controller tuning using meta heuristics. Dr. Garrido, the audience is all yours. I'm going to go ahead and make you a uh, presenter now. Okay. Uh, uh, the only thing I need is how to share my screen. Yes. Uh, I okay, okay, just, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, there no. we go. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> so I think you are reviewing my, my presentation. That's correct. Okay. Thank you very much. I would like to thank Armand Moki from Quanza Consulting and Jacqueline Bicarte from Multion in Mexico for inviting me to give this talk. And I hope you will find interesting the topic about the PID tuning, which uh, for me is very interesting. So to begin with, I, I start with the on, on, outline of the presentation. First, I will talk about the importance of servo systems and then the next section will devote to servo models. The next section to PID controllers, followed by Onishi's disturbance observer, which is a key ingredient in the, P, in the tuning we present here. Next, I will present a PID tuning procedure. We, I will show se several experiments related to this PID tuning. And finally, I will finish the, this talk with some concluding remarks. Well, Importance of servo systems. Uh, we know that servo systems are used in many applications, including robot manipulators, drones, mobile robots, soldier robots, and so on. And they, uh, they are key components in industry, a research subject in automatic control, robotics, and mechatronics, and a paradigm for teaching and educational purposes. In the case of servo models, if we want to apply a model-based controller to a servo, we need some kind of mathematical model describing its dynamics. In the case of small DC servo motors, the servo dynamics are described by secondary linear models in which the electric dynamics are neglected. In the case of large industrial servos, these servos use current servo amplifiers to obtain a linear relationship between the motor core and the control signal and the dynamics are also described by second order models. Now we consider the next second order model of a servo where Y corresponds to the position of the servo, V to the velocity, U to the control signal, J to the inertia of the servo and the load drive and driven by the servo, F the viscous friction, K the gain, the gain, which is also a function of the amplifier driving the, the, the motor, and capital D bar are disturbance. In order to apply the proposed tuning method, we modify the writing of this equation by dividing the, all the, the, this equation by J, and to obtain this equation in which we can distinguish the coefficient A, which is a function of the viscous friction, and B, which correspond to the servo input gain and the disturbance D. In this way, we have two different two, two models for the servo. The first one is a differential equation, and the second one is a transfer function-like model written using a simulated light block, block diagram. Disturbance always appears in practice. And in the case, particular, in the particular case of uh, servo motors or servo systems, 
uh, they correspond to parasitic and in exact compensation voltage in the power amplifier, uh, or to Coulomb and dry friction in the DC motor and load, or disturbance may be due also to non-linear load driven by the motor. And finally, parametric uncertainty in the thermal model may also be recast as a disturbance. For the purpose of this tuning, now consider the two models we have seen before. And in this case, we made the assumption that the friction term, which is free, uh, which corresponds to A multiplied by Y dot, which is essentially the uh, viscous friction term, is assumed to not. And we add this parametric uncertainty associated to this friction term to the original disturbance to, to obtain a new disturbance D. And this writing allows to obtain two new perturbed servo model, which only depends on the servo input gain B, and it has also a disturbance D. Now we will talk about proportional integral and derivative for the well-known PID controller. The PID controller is probably one of the most used controllers in the industry, and robotics, servos, etc. And it's interesting to, uh, to, to, to see some previous historical landmarks behind the development of the PID controller. The first landmark corresponds to the steam governor by James Watt, which was developed in the 18th century. The stability study of closed loop system based on governors, which was performed by James Clerk Maxwell in 1868. And the first theoretical paper on PID control applied to automatic steering of chips, which was published by Nicholas Minorsky in 1922, which is almost 100 years ago. Uh, the issue in the case of the issue of PID control tuning for process control, we, we may use manual tuning, which is more or less standard. It depends on the knowledge of the of the of the person who is trying to control the process itself. And we also have the recourse to to use C, the Siegler Nichols and the Kuhn Kuhn tuning rules, which are very well known. In the case of servo control, we also use manual tuning, but in this case, due to the, due to the fact that the servo, the servos has very simple model, uh, in general, this model are linear, we can use model-based techniques like pole placement, the linear quadratic regulator, and so on. And la uh, in the last year, optimization based on meta heuristic, which uh, correspond to genetic algorithms and particle swarm optimization, are also methods to tune the gains of a controller, and in particular, the, the gains of a PID controller. This figure shows the parallel topology for a PID controller applied to a servo, where the position error E is defined as the difference between the reference, the desired position of the servo, and the actual measured position of the servo. And here we can distinguish the proportional action, the integral action, and the derivative action. And we can recall the proportional action set the speed of response of the closed loop system. The integral, the integral action eliminates or tries to eliminate steady state errors, and it may be thought as a disturbance estimator. And finally, the derivative action injects damping to the closed loop system, and it is able to shape the, the, the form in which the servo responds to, for example, the, uh, to a command, uh, to a step command. For example, an alternative PID parallel topology is shown here, where the error drives the integral action. But in the case of the proportional action, we see that different uh, different uh, gains are applied to the reference and to the output of the servo, and these this gains may be different. And the same we can uh, maybe take the case for the Maybe may be the case for the derivative action. This action I called weighted derivative action and weighted proportional action. And a particular case of this topology is the so-called PID controller with weighted proportional action and velocity feedback, in which the derivative action is generated using the, the velocity measurements. And we retain the weighted proportional action. 
This topology will be used in the sequel for the tuning uh, methodology presented in this talk. Now we, all, we will talk about uh, Onishi's disturbance observer. This, me uh, this method of control is a kind of robust controller or a kind of robust methodology in which a plant, PS, which is affected by a disturbance D, is controlled by using first a nominal controller designed for the undisturbed nominal plant model PS. And this controller is complemented by a disturbance observer which produces an estimate D hat of the disturbance D. And this estimate is used in the control law to counteract the effects of the real, real disturbance D. In order to apply the dough to a servo, the nominal controller will be a proportional derivative controller designed for the nominal servo model, which, which as we have seen before, correspond to a double integrator. And the disturbance observer will be described in the next slides. In the case of the proportional derivative PAD controller, we, uh, this controller is able to stabilize without problem a double integrator. And we, we, on, the only thing we need to, to put to attention is that we need uh, to use proportional positive value for the proportional and the derivative gains. And note also that we are using the inverse of the, the servo input gain to compensate for the real input gain of the servo. So this term, in principle, they should cancel out each another. For the disturbance observer, we consider one of the models you've seen previously in, in the form of a differential equation. And from this model, it is possible to obtain an ideal disturbance estimation, which is with it's uh, shown here. And the main problem with this, uh, this disturbance estimation scheme is that the estimates depend on the angular acceleration, which is not available for measurements. A solution to this problem is to replace the ideal disturbance estimation by another scheme in which it's possible to, in, to, to obtain estimates of the acceleration without actually measuring this quantity. In order to do this, we consider the original ideal disturbance estimation. We applied the Laplace transform to this estimation to finally obtain, uh, to finally obtain this uh, expression. The next step is to modify the estimator by applying a low pass, first order low pass filtering. And in this way, you obtain this expression in which beta corresponds to the cutoff frequency of the filter applied to the disturbance estimator. And this expression also allows obtaining this alternative expression for the disturbance observer in which we can observe the acceleration estimate here. And this estimator is produced by high pass filtering or the velocity measurements of, in, in a circuit. The block diagram for this controller, including the PD controller and the disturbance observer is shown here. The control law is composed of the PD controller, which is shown here in this equation and this block diagram, and a disturbance, com uh, disturbance compensation, which is generated by the disturbance observer, which is, is shown here. Now, we present the PID tuning procedure, which is based on the ideas of the Onishis observer and the PID controller. The main idea of the tuning method is to exploit the equivalence between the PD plus DOB and the PID controllers. And this equivalence has been shown or has been presented in, in this paper. Uh, this paper was presented at the IFA papers on uh, the IFA Congress, the third IFA Conference on Advanced in Proportional Integral Derivative Control in Belgium uh, three years ago, more or less. Okay. To proceed. Consider again the PAD plus DOB control law, which is shown here, the PAD controller, and the disturbance compensation, where E corresponds to the position error and B to the, to the velocity of, of the servo. And this equation shows the disturbance observer. The first step to show the equivalence is to write down the disturbance estimator in this way. And 
from here, we see that we need to replace the control law, which is given by this equation. And after, repla after the replacement, we obtain this expression. And now the next step is to simplify this expression by eliminating the common terms appear appearing in, the, in, the, in this expression. And this allows to write down the, the store and observer in this way. And in the final step, we we'll recall the control law in which the disturbance estimation appears, and we substitute the disturbance estimation given here into this equation to finally obtain a proportional integral derivative controller with weighted proportional action and velocity feedback. We can distinguish the integral action we shown here, a weighted proportional action we shown also here in this part of the, of the control law, and finally the velocity feedback, which is shown in this part of the equation. This block diagram shows the controller in which we can see that beta, which corresponds to the cutoff frequency of the filter used in the disturbance observer, plays a fundamental role in several of the blocks shown here. And note that if beta is equal to zero, then the standard PID controller is recovered. But in this case, the integral action is disengaged which means that when beta is equal to zero, only the PD controller is acting on the servo and there is no possibility to eliminate disturbance or, counter, or counteract their effects. To, to, to tune the PAD controller, we consider a desired closed loop transfer function in which the uh, uh, omega n corresponds to the desired undamped natural frequency, and she is the desired damping factor. And from this equation, it's possible to obtain a, a formula for computing the proportional and the derivative gain, which are function of the omega n and she. The idea of the control or the tuning of this controller is to set a value to the damping, which is, which is equal. Or, or greater than one, and to modify the under that natural frequency omega n to obtain a desired response. Now, we present the tuning, uh, the PID tuning procedure. The first step is to, the, uh, to consider as data the servo input gain B, which means that we, we need to know beforehand this, the value of this gain. The second step is to implement the PID controller with the weighted proportional action and velocity feedback. The third step is to compute the proportional and the derivative gain, and we set the cutoff frequency beta equal to zero. And now we can run the controller, and while the controller is running, we increase the value of beta until eliminating the steady state error and obtaining a response without overshoots. For the experiments, we use a software, MATLAB Singulin 2020V, the Quanser Quark real-time software. In the hardware side, we use a Quanser Voltpack X1 linear power amplifier adequate for low inductance DC motors. A DC motor, the Quanser SRV02 servo motor, which includes a low induction DC motor and an optical encoder. And for data acquisition, we use a Quanser Q2 USB card, which has two encoder inputs, two digital to analog converters, two analog to digital converters, and eight digital input output lines. The experimental setup is as follows. Uh, the MATLAB Simulin and Quark software is running in a laptop computer, which connects to the data acquisition card by means of a USB port, a digital to analog converter of the of the data acquisition card connects to the input of the volt pack amplifier, and subsequently the output of the amplifier is directly connected to the RS, uh, SRV02 motor, and finally the optical encoder attached to the motor is connected to the data acquisition card.
The control tuning in this experiment is set as follows. The servo input gain is equal to 24, and the desired transfer function is given here. The numerator is equal to, uh, to 400, and the denominator corresponds to this characteristical polynomial in which omega n is set to 20, and the damping factor is set to 1.3, which gives a proportional gain of 400 and a, a derivative gain of 52. The controller was implemented using a simulin diagram in which we note a display showing the position error in encoder pulses and another display shows the value of beta, of beta which is currently used in the, during the experiment. And for velocity measurements, we use a high pass filter which allows obtaining velocity estimates from encoder position measurements. And finally, the reference correspond to a square wave with, with this filter to this low pass filter. And we begin with experiments in the next slides. In the case of beta equal to zero, we only have a PKPD controller acting on the servo motor. As you can see, there exists a large position error in encoder pulse, which is about 42 to 47 pulses. And this error can be seen directly in, in, in the graph here and here. So the TPD control alone is not able to reach zero state, uh, zero, zero steady state there. If we increase beta to 15, note that the error now is zero. We have several overshoot here and here in this part, in this part. And note also that the uh, control activity increases. You, you, as you see, there are a little bit more spikes in the control signal. In order to eliminate the overshoot, we further increase beta to 35. And note now that the overshoot has all have all disappeared. We have zero position error, and the response is faster, as you can see also in, in the video. And finally, in order to completely eliminate the overshoot, we increase beta to 45. There are no overshoots. You see in the video that the motor responds smoothly and fast, and the position error in encoder pulse is zero. Okay, uh, we conclude this brief talk with several conclusions. And the proposed unit requires minimum knowledge of the servo model. So we only need to know the servo input gain. This is the, the, first, the first conclusion. The second conclusion is that this uh, parameter, uh, parameter or gain tuning is based on the equivalence between PD plus DOP and PID controller, which means also means that the PAD in some in some way inherits inherits uh, using this this topology uh, the, uh, the disturbance rejection capabilities of a disturbance observer. Uh, at least in my opinion, <laughs> because I have some experience by uh, tuning uh, PAD controllers in real time for servos, this uh, method seems less difficult compared with manual tuning. Sometimes manual tuning is very difficult. It depends on the uh, experimental setup, the load driving driven by the, the servo motor, and sometimes it's it's not easy to put to work a PAD controller using manual tuning. So this method may may be an alternative to manual tuning. And finally, this method is easy to set up using rapid prototype software and hardware. And uh, it, it took me about one day to put to work uh, uh, the controller, maybe another day to, to perform all the experiments and to take the videos. So it's very easy to put to work. And the only thing you need to take into account to, to, to apply this method is that you need the input gain. And the input gain, and it's maybe a question, uh, the input gain, uh, in my case, I have performed a uh, uh, parameter estimation procedure using the least square algorithm 
this was enough to, to, to set up the controller and would pull results as you can see, you, you, you could see in the experiments. So with this slide, fin uh, I finished my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. I, and I hope you had some questions. Thank Arma. you. Thank you very much, um, uh, Dr. Garrido. That was a fascinating uh, presentation. Uh, to those who are um, uh, joining us live, um, this is a good time. If you have any questions, uh, please use the uh, questions pane in the GoToWebinar interface to send your questions over, and um, uh, I will present, present those to Dr. Garrido. Um, I do have a couple that have uh, come in and I'm just gonna go through them. Um, first question, um, what happens if the value of the servo input gain used in the PID controller is different from its nominal value? Well, in this case, what happens is, well, it, 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 there, there are two situations. The first situation is in the case when the, the, the value, the, the use in the controller is close to the real value, to the nominal value of the servo. In this, in this case, there are no, there are no problems. So uh, I, uh, we, we can expect that the controller works very well. The problem is when you have poor values or values not near from the nominal value. And in this case, maybe you are not, you will be not able to, to, to tune correctly the PID controller. And it, it may be shown theoretically that the, the, the region of the stability of the closed loop system shrinks. So you don't have global stability in terms of the theoretical results. And maybe you may observe some oscillation and um, probably you are not able to perfectly tune the, the cell. That's uh, in my opinion, this is what I, I can see in, in, in practice. And uh, so, you need to know more or less well the game. And it's, it's the same for many methods, model-based controllers. You need more or less know uh, the nominal parameters of the plant, in this case of the server. Thank you. Um, Dr. Question, uh, one of the audience members is asking, how do you deal with uh, backlash? Backlash, no. Uh, in this case, we are not dealing with backlash. So the backlash is a very, uh, a very difficult phenomena to tackle, uh, which appear frequently in, in many mechanical systems. So this method is, if you have a very quantity of, of backlash, for example, in the case of the SRV02 servo, there is no problem. But if the backlash is large, this method won't work. No, no, it's not. It's not intended for this for, for backlash. Backlash is difficult. Backlash is a research uh, subject, in my opinion. Um, next uh, question: um, um, Will increasing beta, uh, the value of beta in the example of, uh, above forty-five, improve the response time? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do, uh, I don't understand. What, what was the question? Yeah. Uh, so the audience member is asking if you increase the value of beta above 45 in, in, in your ah, presentation, yes. yeah. will yes. that yeah, improve yeah, the response? Yeah, 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 yeah I, I understood. Uh, no, the problem is that when you increase too much beta, some issues about noise, uh, for example, uh, when you, you know that we uh, I am using a high pass filter to obtain velocity estimate from precision measurements. So if you increase too much the value of beta, you can you you may amplify the noise. It's, it's, it's not exactly the noise, but the variation of the velocity estimates in uh, produced by the very simple um, differentiator that I use, and you will see uh, vibrations. So there is a limit for increasing beta in practice. No, no, you, you cannot increase uh, infinity, uh, infinity beta. You will uh, you will reach some level in which you you note. The, for example, uh, you you know that in in the case of the control signal, every time I increase the beta, the number of spikes in the control signal increases. So when you increase too much beta, some vibration uh, begins to appear. 
So it's it's a natural because we have a model of dynamics, we have noise, and the blood estimate has a lot of variation, so it's not possible to increase beta above a certain value. So we need to be cautious about increasing the value of beta. Sometimes in some experiments, not with this equipment, with, or not with other equipment, when I increase beta, uh, we reach a level in which the variation are too, too high that it's not possible to, to further increase beta. Thank you. So it's not, there, there are no magic here. Yeah. <laughs> it's only a simple method. <laughs> Um, another interesting question, um, uh, this, uh, the audience member is asking, can we set the adjustment of beta in terms of optimal control so we can obtain um, an optimal beta? Uh, probably, yes. I have tried to, to link this PID tuning with, for example, an, an LQ or linear quadratic regulator. It seems possible. I'm not sure. It, it seems possible. Because what, what I can see, I, I have seen in, in, in some papers, is that they optimize the nominal controller, but they not touch the, 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 the disturber estimator. So it's it's an interesting question. It's, it's a topic of, of research. But I think it, it is possible. Um, another interesting question, audience members asking, if I have a cascaded structure, for example, PPI, PI, corresponding to position, velocity, and torque, how does okay. one tune the cutoff beta? Uh, I don't know. Maybe we need to rewrite this, this uh, topology in terms of the PID with weight proportional and derivative action. I'm not sure, certain if all the topologies of PID controllers are equivalent to the student observer. At least, I don't know. I, I only know this topology. Maybe it's possible that several PID topology, besides the, the topology I had presented, may be recast uh, as a disturbing observer, uh, observer structure. Maybe. That's, in, is, that's interesting. <laughs> I will write uh, this question because it's, it's interesting. Thank you. Um, another audience member saying, um, hello, Dr. Garrido, thanks for the presentation. Please, could you explain if the controller is able to work with the final gains for any position? even if the system is yes, being yes, disturbed. Yes, yes. Okay. yes, for example, yes, in, in this case, I, I have presented, um, I don't remember, 100 degrees of, of displacement of the, of the desired position. I have tried to use a uh, smaller and greater uh, set uh, reference. I did worse, but remember that if the reference is too large, some uh, wind-up phenomena in the integrator will appear. So be careful. This works very well if the, the, the displacement are within 360 degrees. So when you have, for example, two, three, or four turns of the motor, no, uh, we need to be careful with the wind of phenomena of the, of, of the integrator. In fact, I, what I want to, to do is to extend, to extend this work to the case in which we have also and an anti-wind of mechanism inside the, the integrator. That's, it's, for, for me, it's a, it's a matter of research now. Thank you. And uh, two more questions. So um, may the proposed tuning method be used for process control? No. No, I, in my opinion, no. Why? Because in process control, you have the time. You have time delay. And this method is not for time delay, as uh, uh, at least as it was presented in this way. So I know that there exist several uh, disturbance observer schemes applied to brush control, but you cannot, uh, at, oh, at least maybe you can, if the time delay appearing in the process is very small, maybe. But I'm not sure. No, when, when I develop this equivalence, I have studied with a PhD student this equivalence, what I have uh, I had in mind was a servo, not a process control. The process control is very difficult for me. It's, in my opinion, is much difficult than the servo system. And uh, I, I, I have seen in some several papers that uh, some uh, fellows are using the silver nickels method for tuning uh, servos. And the problem is that in servo system, the time delays are very small. 
for example, in the case of the of the experimental setup that I am using, the time delay is due to the delay communication due to the USB protocol. So they are very small. So in, in the case of process control, no, it's it's more difficult. It's more difficult. You have a stable plant. You have uh, in general you have stable stable plants input output stable. You have time delay. You have a gain and uh, maybe a pole to one two poles. Uh, no, you, I, th I think we need to modify this procedure in order to, to cope or to, to face the problems uh, when trying to control uh, a, a process, con a process. So it's sorry, <laughs> no, no, it's not possible to use this control at least uh, at the peer plants. No. Thank you, uh, Dr. Rubin. One one final question. Um, okay. The audience member is asking. Can we customize the filter used for DOB? Currently, the webinar covered a low-pass filter. Mm -hmm. Can we use, say, a higher order low-pass yes, filter? Yes, yes. And can we shape the filter in such a way that we target disturbance rejection for a particular set of frequencies? Uh, yes, yes, we, we can do that. Well, I have, choose, I have chosen a first order filter for the sake of the equivalence. Uh, but in fact, if you review the papers by Onishis, the original papers, they use, uh, for example, second order filters, and in this way they avoid the, the use of velocity measurements. So see, it's possible, and there are many papers in which uh, the filter, the filter associated to the disturbance observer, may be modified to, to meet several optimization or, or radiation possibilities and to act in a band of, of frequencies. Yes, it's possible. But in the case of the particular case of the servo, we retain, with my student and me, we retain only a, a first order filter in order to obtain the equivalence. That's, for that reason, we, on, we only use a first order filter. Maybe it's too simple, but it, well, at least for the servo it works. Maybe for other systems, we need to, to make a uh, different choice of the filter, as you point out. Well, uh, this brings us to the end of our webinar. Uh, once again, thank you, Dr. Garrido, for your time and this wonderful presentation. And a big thank you to everyone who attended um, today's uh, event uh, live. I recommend that you visit our website at www.quanzer.com to find out more about our numerous research validation platforms, as well as our upcoming webinars. And please don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn and check out our collection of videos and tutorials on YouTube. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and please stay safe. Okay, thank you, Armand, for inviting me. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you, Quanzer. For giving me this opportunity, and we, maybe we see you in the next months or years <laughs> with an, in another. We webinar. would love to have you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Professor Gary. Thank right. you. Goodbye. Thank everyone. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.